Emily Wood. I was born in Hanson, Massachusetts, July the 5th, 1917. Moved home here in Port Howe when I was two years old, 1917, 1919. They came home here to buy that place and start a store. My grandfather and, and my father and you see, they used to live here. My grandfather was was born here in Port Howe. He, he lived in the house across the road, across the way. And my my father was born here, and my mother was born here. But she she went out the states when she was about eight years old because her mother died, and her aunt brought them three girls up. But anyway, my, my parents met again out in the States. Well, I just remember it was a nice big house. And it had a, a, a big wood house on the back, and then you had to go down the, the side <laughs> to the toilet. <laughs> Inside toilet, but not like what we have nowadays. Uh, I, I don't know. It was just a nice house, that's all. Well, it's changed a lot. There used to be two fish factories. Uh, one, two, three churches. But they're just the two churches now. And there used to be about four or five cottages down on the, the bank. And of course, in the summertime, there are lots of lots of people around. And there used to be a different bridge than what's there now. And years back, before I can remember, there used to be a ferry. There used to be a ferry go across. And and when I just just across the river, to, and when I was young, uh, we never we never drove the bridge in the winter. We went across the ice, and the, the cars, the cars never. Yeah, it was always it was always so solid. Yeah. You know, I used to in the summertime, I used to stand and watch. I out and watch cars going by, <laughs> and I used to count how many people. I used to know everybody in Port Howe, and I, as I remember now, it was about 400 I counted. <laughs> now, I don't know how many people would be here now, but it's so different now. You, you don't know hardly anybody. We, we have so many new people moved in. I don't know them at all. I don't even know their names. Well, one thing I remember, the, the earliest, is when I was to the States with my mother and my baby brother. And I remember out there uh, coasting with a little friend out there. And I remember of her aunt, my aunt, taking me to a show, like in a theater, which I'd never been to, of course. But I was only about five years old, but you know I remember that. Another thing I remember so well, there used to be a church up on the hill, the first house up on the left, yeah, yeah, right up on the hill on the left. There used to be a church right there. And we went to some kind of a do, and they put on, and we used to have uh, what they called a fish pond. I don't you ever heard tell of that or not. You know, you put string on it, some, put some things on it, and you paid. Well, I had that, and then they sold ice cream. Now, this is what I remember so well. The ice cream, so I decided I'd buy a quarter's worth, and the quarter's worth of ice cream was a, a saucer, just loaded right up. 
so I didn't know how I was ever going to get it eat before it melted. <laughs> so I remember that. That's one of the funny things. And another funny thing, when I used to go to school, but this is when I was just first starting school. They had a little store over at Mr. Pepper's store. So one day, I asked Mr. Pepper, I said, if I bring some money tomorrow, can, can I have a cho buy a chocolate bar now if I bring you the money tomorrow? And so he said yes. So of course I picked the biggest chocolate bar there was. It was only five cents. And it was called an Eat More. And I just hated it because it was full of nuts. <laughs> and so then I was so cross at myself that I had to pay five, take a five cents to them. <laughs> so that's uh, some of the funny little things. I used to love to going down to the beach shore, you know. Well, there'd be other kids, you see, and I learned to swim all by myself. Wasn't much good at skating or anything. I used to have to go and get the cows up on the hill when it's, when it's milking time. That that was all clear up there then, you see. It's all grown up now. You know, up where the the woods there. And another chore I had to do around the house was, <laughs> I said, I didn't know whether I should say this or not, but the girl said, yes, you say it. Uh, I used to have to take, <laughs> take the chamber pots <laughs> downstairs and empty them. <laughs> Something that happened way back. Oh, my land, I could remember lots of things if I get my memory going. Uh, well, at Christmas time, my father used to take the yard goods and stuff like that off of the so many shelves, and he'd put a lot of things up, and then they'd have some kind of a draw. You know, I don't know, you buy a ticket or what. I. I can't remember exactly how he did that, but that's what he'd do at Christmas time. And used to always be lots of people hanging around, you know, not not, not like they, they do now. You know, they spend an evening in the store and the neighbors. And Oh, my father used to have ice cream, and he used to make banana splits. <laughs> oh dear, what else? Uh, way back then, they had molasses and a great big puncheon. Yeah, and you know, just fill a gallon, half gallon jug at a time. Same thing with vinegar. And uh, he used to, what they used to call candle the eggs. They had to put the eggs up in front of the little light to see if they're okay, if, if, if they thought they were a little old or something. I attended school in Porto. I enjoyed the school, but I didn't enjoy the studying. There's no uh, snow plows then. You have to plow through the snow unless uh, somebody went through with a horse and said. And uh, there was uh, all, all, all the grades, including grade 10. And I forget how many, many pupils there'd be. Well, the place would be pretty well full. One teacher for all the grades, yeah. And my mother and my grandmother both went to school in that same school that I went to. So it was 
pretty old. Now, I, I just like them all. I, I couldn't really pick out any favorite one. There, there was one that boarded with us. Of course, I liked her pretty well because she gave me a couple of nice dresses. <laughs> no, as really, I, I just liked them all. Yeah, I had a good many different ones. I, I used to go to the Gospel Hall, and now I go to the United Church. Just down the road. Well, one thing I was going to mention was about the blackfish. Well, oh yeah, I've got to tell you. <laughs> well, all the, these fish grounded off of Cameron Beach, and they don't know why. And I think something must have scared them, and they came in on the tide, and then they couldn't get out. And I think there's around about 20 of them. And some people gathered them up, cut them up, and put them on the land for fertilizer. And I have a picture taken on, on one. And I think that was about, this was in 1940. And another thing I had in the paper, one time, the News and Sentinel from Amherst, uh, they put on a banquet for us correspondents. And I used to write the news for, for the paper. So they put on a... And they put their picture in the paper, just the, the group. Yeah. I forget what year that was. And I don't think I saved it. Mm. Just a regular Christmas, you know, if you get together and, oh my goodness, oh, I suppose just getting up and screwing and see what Santa brought you, that's about it. Oh, we used to make uh, chains out of tissue paper and we used to string cranberry, cranberries and Yes, that was the main thing, besides your other decorations you would have bought. Well, oh, way back we used to have little candles, little uh, clips that would put on the branches for the tree and, the, and uh, stick the candle in. But, you know, we didn't use them very much when there's too many little ones around. You have to be very careful they would get upset. Yeah. Uh, how was it different than it is now? <laughs> well, it's different for me now because I'm here by myself. <laughs> but I generally go to my son's next door. Well, that's the oldest relative that I can remember would be my grandmother, because I don't remember meeting any older people. And then, of course, she wouldn't be that old either at that time, but uh, I don't remember of ever meeting any anyone. But, but I knew all about that uh, picture that I showed you of uh, Aunt Barbara, my grandmother's aunt, my great aunt. Yeah, she lived to be 104 years old. My grandmother's name was, uh, her real name was Mary Ann, but they always called her Maudie. I don't know where she got that, but. <laughs> well, she was just a dear old lady to me. When I grew up, she was the greatest that, yeah, I thought the world of her. Well, the, the Woods, the first Woods, Robert Wood, came to America in, 19 and 30, in 1635. Now I don't know anything about, but that, that, that's the Woods. That, that would be my grandfather, Wood. 
and my grand and his mother's his mother was from the Highlands of Scotland. Oh, I'll still be from the Highlands of Scotland. And her parents and their family came to Nova Scotia and landed at Barney's River near Pictou, Nova Scotia, where they first lived in a log cabin. They later moved up shore to Port Howe and lived there when she married. And her mother was from the royal family and received her allotment of gold each month as long as she lived. This came from her mother's rights in Scotland. And we all are descendants from the Campbells of Argyle on her side. Grandfather on the farm. Here, this, is, this used to be quite a big farm. And way up the other road, across the way. Sam Wood, Samuel Wood. Like I say, you're on a farm, yeah. And then they, when they brought the the store, it was run by S. P. Wood and Son. And later, when my grandfather, he, my, my father sort of must have took over the whole business, I guess. And then he had two brothers. They started up two other stores, one Pugworth Junction, one in Linden. But my father was kind of overseer of, the, of them, you know. <laughs> uh, you, you like to enjoy this. This is infamous, in infamous, the, gir the girls called it. But I had a stepmother, a stepmother on my mother's side. She was, she wasn't a, a good lady at all. My, my mother had two brothers, three brothers and, and two sisters. Well, like I say, the sisters were taken to the States after her mother and her father married. Anyway, this stepmother, she put two of the boys adrift in a rowboat. And if it hadn't have been for some fishermen out, it would have been the end of them. But they discovered them out there in the water, brought them back. And, and another brother... He had the scars until he, as long as he did, lived, with a pitchfork in his back. <laughs> she, now, she wasn't a very good stepmother, was she? No, no. <laughs> so so the, the, that, that story now has been handed down to my, and Carol that works there, she, she speaks the poetry. She calls her the witch. <laughs> <laughs> and let's see. And another thing, she was kind of what they call a rum runner, I guess. And after a few later years, I think this was after her husband died. They lived like what we could we call across the river or or Philip. She lived over there. And she, what she used to do now, this story came from her daughter, her, which was my mother's half-sister. She told her that her mother used to, to seem to be some, some gentlemen that would come. Anyway, after they, she, she put her daughter to bed with them. And then the next morning, she accused him of you know, whatever, and get have to get money out of them. I guess that's how she way she had to get money out of them. Whatever you call that. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's it. 
that that was that was old that was what we called her old, old Kate we called her and then year then years after that she lived somewhere else across the river in some kind of a they called it the Cape the road. She, I guess, used to make beer and sell it, or whatever. What do you call that? <laughs> so she was well known. Well, I have the picture of my great would be that be my great grandparents? Yes, my great grandparents on my fa on my grandfather's side, and I have pictures of my great of my grandmother on my mother's side, and my great grandmother. Great grandfather. Yeah. Ivan Leslie Ripley. John and Hattie Ripley. He had a sister, Rita Tower. That's her married name. He had a brother, but has passed away young, quite young. This is interesting. <laughs> well, like I say, years ago in the, in the store, in the wintertime, there wasn't much to do. So a lot of the, the gentlemen would gather around the store and talk, and they'd play checkers or play croconole. And uh, he was one of them, and I used to hang around. I guess I had my eye on him. So that's the way. <laughs> September the 14th, 1934, at the Pugwash Manse. Well, I... <laughs> it's not really what you'd call a wedding, but I suppose it is, it is a wedding. Uh, I just remember we had a, a big uh, snow, and there was just one car track down where to get to Bogosh. And then when we came back, we had what they call a chivalry. We used to we used to call it a banjo. All the neighbors around would call and make a noise, and then come in and greet you. And uh, another thing I wanted to, to say, this, this was, wasn't the wedding day, but my husband told me afterwards, when he went to get, to go down to buy the license, he didn't know how he was going to, and when he came downstairs from getting dressed, there was a fellow there that came to pay him for some wood that he bought for him. So that's how he got paid for the license. <laughs> Well, he's a very quiet person, yeah, very quiet. Uh, very loving, kind. Good worker. He was a carpenter. Yeah. Uh, he wasn't a carpenter. He... Well, yeah, he's always a carpenter, doing little things, but it was about five years after we got married that he started working with a, a gentleman that does carpenter work and building houses and things. And So we didn't do any farming after that. Didn't, didn't have much of a farm, just a small farm. But he built a lot of houses around. That my first paying job. I never worked out. 
until before my husband died. He went. He, he was sick. Uh, said I had to go. Out. So I, I had a job over at the restaurant. But that wasn't for too long. And then, and how much did I get paid? I was trying to think about that. How much did I get paid? I don't think it was very much. I don't know whether it was a dollar an hour. I, I really, I was trying to think of that yesterday. Can't remember. And then, anyway, I don't know, sixty-five, fifty-five. I would maybe be 55 or 56. I started working at the hospital in Pugwash. I, I cooked. I worked there till I was 65. State squares. I have, I have one certain couple that he's always looking for my date squares. Raising my family, I think. That's a, a good one, isn't it? I have a family of seven. I still had two girls at home when my husband died. I used to live up the road. I come down here in 1969. About my quilt making. I love making quilts. And I've made, I would say, over 80 now. I made and sold about 20 fancy quilts. I tell my son that uh, I'm, I'm no good when it comes to talking. He said, talking? You're talking all the time. <laughs> well, I've got a really wonderful family, and they're all, I've never had any trouble with any of them. When they were growing up, and uh, they've all got families of their own except one. One daughter's never married yet, anyway. And they're all very good to me, all of them. My son next door, and his wife, I've, I've got a wonderful daughter-in-law. And, well, well, all of my daughter-in-laws are nice, I must say. I don't mean any special one. And two years ago, and I had almost two years ago, I had my uh, uh, heart operation, bypass. I had all of my family with me except one, and that was the one that's out in BC. She couldn't come. And they were so good. And then Billy, he was here and from Ontario, and he went back home, and then he came back home, back and stayed three weeks with me. And, what else can I say? Oh yes, and last fall, last fall, Billy was home again, and he took my daughter and I back to Ontario with him. We spent a couple of weeks there, and then we flew home. So they're, they're all just a real good family, good to me. I tell them they're too good to me. <laughs> 